guys, welcome back for this week's video. I know that last week I previewed for you guys the IT Cosmetics um, CC Cream and that is the next product that I was going to review, but I kind of lost track of time and realized this is the last week of June and we are halfway through the year, so what I had wanted to do was do kind of a favorites video. I don't do monthly favorites videos because I don't think that one month is enough time for me to rack up enough products and then really experience them to give you guys a review, a hit or miss or whatever you want to call it. I know they're really popular videos, but I just don't make that kind of investment or I feel like a month is really necessarily enough time to get through that many products. So this is kind of happening in June, so it's a June favorites and uh, favorites video and a dislikes video, whatever. Um, but it's looking back at all of the products that I have reviewed for you guys. So there will be a full review video that I've already done for each of these products, but this is kind of interesting because some of the products that ended up in my favorites are ones that I didn't really like when I first tried them. So that's another reason I'm kind of moving away from first impression videos at this point. I know that people really like them because you really get to see what my first impression of a product is. You know that there's really no faking it. Um, and that element of it is really interesting, but there have been a couple of products that I've done first impression videos on where I haven't really been that impressed with the product, but then after I've gotten a chance to use it for a while, kind of play with it, make it work in a little bit of a different way, I've come to actually really appreciate it. So that's just sort of a heads up for what's coming in the future. But for this video, I have just five products that I wanted to talk to you guys about that I have reviewed throughout the year, which have made it into pretty much my daily beauty routine. So those are top fives. And then I have three that not so much. So let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> the first product is one that I actually reviewed relatively recently, but I had been using it for a couple weeks before I did the review. It's the NYX Total Control Drops Foundation. It's hard for me to pinpoint what it is about this foundation that I love so much. I really do think it just comes back to that very fluid, liquidy texture. The texture is so thin and so light without sacrificing coverage. It's not a full coverage foundation, but it's not like some of these CC creams or BB creams that I've tried where I put it on and, you know, they claim to be a tinted moisturizer and it's nothing. I mean, I might as well just put plain lotion on my skin. This definitely does give me coverage and for being a drugstore, um, it's really long lasting. I do use a primer with it and you can see in the video, I'll link down below where I did the wear test of this. I do recommend the primer. Um, it's not even an all day foundation. I think I just like it that it's very easy. It's very blendable. It is good in a pinch and it's really, you know, only $15, I think. So I don't necessarily feel bad especially on days when I do my makeup once in the morning and then maybe have to come home, work out, shower, and do my makeup again. Whereas when I reach for a bottle of $50 foundation, I kind of cringe a little bit every time I'm pumping more and more out knowing that I'm going to have to replace that. So this is a really affordable, great foundation that I use, you know, several times a week, more than some of my designer brands. So this one's on my list. The next one on my list is one that I reviewed and actually said that I felt pretty mediocre about and I'm kind of having to retract that statement now. It is the L'Oreal Air Dry It Ruffled Body Mousse. So in the video when I gave you guys a first impression of this, I had never tried it before. It was just so-so. Now that we are fully into summer, I use this every single day or every other day if it's a non-wash day. but. I figured out how to use it and it's made all the difference. So when I tried it for you guys in the video, I just put it in wet hair, flipped my head upside down, scrunched a little bit and left it go. Now what I do is I kind of, I put it in the wet hair. I do put a little bit of um, argan oil on the ends of my hair just to kind of make sure those stay nice and smooth. And then I'll kind of grab it and loosely twist like that and get it into like a bun up on top of my head and I let it air dry like that so sometimes I'll sleep with it like that or I'll give it several hours and then when I take it down I have a much better this is day two hair so don't judge it based on that but I have a nice wave in my hair and I'll just put some um, curl scrunching cream in it to give it a little bit more texture and that has kept me away from a blow dryer for over a month so this is also on my list has made it into my daily beauty routine 
The next products that I've reviewed that I have been using daily actually kind of surprised me. It is the Bronze Goddess lipsticks that I purchased. Um, these were by Estee Lauder, I believe. And they came in two shades, super, super similar. One was called Sunlit Nude and the other was called, what is it, Sun Blush? Yes. So one's a little bit pinker, one's a little bit more on the nude side. I'll put the swatch clip for you guys back up here on the video so you guys can see. And everything that I said about them in my initial video turned out to be true and then some. I just, they match all of my makeup. It doesn't matter what kind of look that I'm doing and you guys know that I'm a pretty natural going chick. <laughs> Tango. I don't feel silly if I'm wearing them throughout the morning and they've worn off of my lips because it's not like I'm going from a really bold or even a really matte look on my lip to then nothing. These are a subtle enough shimmer that I do feel like it gives my lips a little bit of an extra oomph. I'm wearing one of them right now actually, um, but it's not so noticeable that if I go to the bathroom after lunch and come back out into the office, it's suddenly like, oh, she just redid her makeup. That and it's summer and it's all about the, you know, being tan and glowy and light. It's not uh, a lipstick I'll probably wear super often in the dead of winter, but it's a perfect summer lipstick, which I believe I also mentioned in the video. I was just surprised that I ended up using these as much as I have. One or the other is pretty much always in my makeup bag and there's only maybe one or two other glosses I've even been using this summer. So we have two more on the top five list. This one shouldn't come as any surprise. It is the Lancome um, Harmony Bronzer Blush from their Summer 2017 kit. Um, mine is in the lighter of the two shades, Patio Mediterranean, and they came out with um, a darker version as well for darker skin tones. I love it. I said in the video I couldn't get enough of the ease of use. You can customize the level of intensity of the color. It is one product, you get blush, you get bronzer. Um, it, it's fantastic, it saves me so much time. I love the shade, I love how blendable it is. I love that it doesn't move on my face when I wear it. This I have been using every day. I know that I bought the NARS liquid blush and I've been playing with liquid blushes and highlighters. I can still use the liquid highlighter with this because as you've seen, I put that on with the liquid foundation and then do powder products over top of that. Um, but this has been the bronzer blush palette that I have been using since I bought it a couple of months ago. And you can see, I mean, the design is still even in it. I, this product is going to last me probably until next summer and I am perfectly happy about that. So this was an amazing purchase. And the last one that is definitely a part of my regular beauty routine is the Cutex Care, um, BB cream for nails and I will zoom in to show you guys but I have used almost half the bottle at this point and I was surprised because I kind of bought this on a whim and it kind of seemed sort of pointless to me when I bought it. Um, I said it you know was basically just like a light pink French manicure nail polish except for the fact that it has um, healthy oils and treatments in it that are good for your nails. And the reason that I've been reaching for this instead of nail polish is number one, that it is very nourishing for the nails, but also it dries so fast and to such a pretty, very like Kate Middleton natural manicure um, without a whole lot of effort on your part. So it is a quick, easy to use beauty product that I feel actually really does bring something to the table. It's not just one of those beauty products where, you know, you put it on and you're like, eh, I can't really even tell that it did anything. So. Um, I don't think I've ever gone through a bottle of a nail product that quickly before in my life and this was only I think six dollars or so on jet.com so I highly recommend this product as well. Now moving into the three that kind of eh, I haven't really used since I did the video on them. So the first one I'm sad to say was the Clinique Blend It Yourself Pigment Drops which again surprised me given my love affair with the NYX Total Control Drop Foundation. Um, these Maybe it's because you don't mix the NYX foundation with a moisturizer and with this one you do, so I feel like you kind of lose the pigment. To be fair, I've never tried just applying this straight to my face, but you're not supposed to. It specifically says shake vigorously and mix with moisturizer, so um, I guess I could try it just as a pigment right on my skin, but something about mixing it with that moisturizer it really does just turn it into something else for me and I feel like... Eh, it's kind of that tinted moisturizer like is there even something on my face? I just wasn't terribly impressed with it even when I did the video on it and that opinion hasn't changed So this was kind of a waste of money, 
um, not a product I recommend, which again, I use a lot of Clinique products, so I was really surprised by that, but you know, you can't win them all. The second one that I haven't really used since I did the video on it is the Laura Geller um, Liquid Gelato Pillow Top Illuminizer. This one I think might have more to do with the color than the product itself. I don't know. You know I've been obsessed with my liquid highlighters lately. There's just something about this one that didn't stand out to me amongst my collection and I had I just haven't reached for it since. Um, I don't know if it's maybe I don't really care for the pillow top applicator. Um, if like I said it's the color ballerina is the one that I picked up and maybe I just don't really like how it looks on my skin. There's something about this one that fell short for me. I think if you're going for a liquid illuminator or a cream or illuminator, yeah, illuminator or a highlighter, a cream, a cream highlighter, anything like that, there are definitely better ones out there. I really like the Marc Jacobs Coconut Dew Drops. Um, I like the Benefit What's Up Cream Highlighter as well right now. So there are just ones that I think do a lot better job than this for the money. So I don't recommend this product either. And the last one that it's hard for me to say this one was a disappointment, but I kind of just felt like it was a product that wasn't super worth the investment. It was more a novelty item. Was the Tom Ford Ombre um, Palette Lip Collection. It was this guy right here that came with the two lip colors so that you could kind of brush on an ombre effect on your lips without um, needing to buy two separate lipsticks because they came for you already pre-coordinated. And I liked the product. I think that the Tom Tom Ford lipsticks in general are pretty fantastic. I just felt like it was kind of a pain in the butt to use, like a lot of effort for not a lot of payoff. Um, the color range was pretty limited. I wouldn't have wanted to do this in like a bright red or a deep dark purple or two that they had. So I went with something that was a little bit more nude and maybe that's my fault. Maybe I shouldn't have. But just the reapplication throughout the day just was kind of too much effort to be worth it for me. Um, if you're somebody who doesn't mind that, then by all means go for it. Um, but this product was, I think, almost $60. And to me, it was just kind of a novelty item. Um, as far as quantities and stuff go, I don't actually have the box anymore, so I don't know how much of each color you get. Maybe it is the equivalent of like two lipsticks or something, so it's actually a really good price. But again, it's only a good price if you're actually using the product and getting the cost per, the cost per use out of it. Um, and this one, obviously, I haven't even used. So that is another one that was kind of a disappointment and maybe my money could have been better invested elsewhere. So that will wrap up my June favorites and dislikes, or I don't really have a title, a fancy flashy title for these videos because I don't really do them often. It'll probably be another six months before I do them again. But I just wanted to give you guys some perspective on products once I got to know them a little bit better and um, figure out how to use them best and some other products that sort of fell short for me after the fact, after I had a chance to work with them for a little while. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I will be back next week with the It CC Cream as promised. So subscribe to make sure you don't miss that and also to make sure that you don't miss our Monday workouts that I'm doing for you guys now every week. Um, go and check out the workouts and some recipes and nutritional lifestyle stuff over on the blog at 24karatkelly.com. Thank you so much for watching and spending your time with me. I really do appreciate it, and I will see you in next week's video. Bye!